2014, Joey Tokening was in Japan working with a casting group. He was in training, 27 years old. Three months from, three months from then, he was going to visit his family in the Philippines, his young daughter and his wife. Unfortunately, they would never see him again. Joey was found dead from heart disease at the age of 27. The labor union looked into the issue and determined that the reason for his death was directly correlated to overwork. So obviously this is a very terrible thing. A man of 27 dies because he's being overworked. So the question has to become how many people are actually overworking? As they looked further into the issue, they found out that one in five people in Japan were at risk of death from simply working too much. So again, this begs another question. If this many people are working this much, is it worth it? Is this effort level worth it? So our group today, Mitch, myself, Patrick, and Eddie are gonna determine is working this much worth it or is it actually more beneficial to shorten work days? So as many of you know, the average work day is eight hours. So on one extreme, there's a study that shows that anyone who works 11 plus hours is actually 2.5 times more likely to develop depression, anxiety, be an angry person than someone who works anywhere under 11. Additionally, 60% of those those people are actually 60% more likely to develop heart disease, sort of like Joey. So this begs the question, why, why are we doing it? Studies have started to show that the more you work, you start to burn out. Burnout is essentially a mental and physical exhaustion from having to cope from stressful demands on a constant, constant basis. With burnout, you start to see stuff like stress, you start to see anxiety, people become angry. So is this productive in the workplace? The answer is, is simply no. And so one example of this that really speaks to this, a hospital in Gothenburg, Sweden, decided we have a high burnout rate and we have a ton of people displaying absenteeism. Absenteeism is essentially comes from burnout where people reach a point in their work where they're so stressed where they can't handle it that they just stop showing up. So how do they fix this? They moved their work hours from eight hours to six hours. So no longer were they allowed to work over six hours. So then all of a sudden Anders Heidelander, who was in charge of the hospital said, yeah, in fact, this was kind of an expensive switch, but all of a sudden they had almost no one calling in sick. So you start seeing these health benefits where people aren't sick. They're more willing to come to work. You don't see absenteeism. You don't see depression and you're not going to see anyone dying, which is a truly tragic incident. So from there, I'm going to pass it over and I hope you enjoy the rest of the presentation. So I'm going to talk a little bit about how uh, working less hours affects the organization as a whole. So another study conducted in Gothenburg, Sweden at the Sparta Dahlins Elderly Care Facility tested nurses and how many hours they work in a day. So the nurses were given the opportunity to work six hours every single day for two years uh, rather than eight hours. And the effects were really great. The nurses um, had a, a lower level of stress, uh, took less hours, um, took less breaks during the day, took less time off during the year, and were overall healthy individuals. And another study um, in the same article discussed a recent experiment found in the Mayo Clinic Proceedings, which is a general medicine journal, which is very highly acclaimed, and it tested 10,000 Floridian workers, and the article pretty much said that um, healthy individuals, healthy workers who who healthy workers were found to spend uh, about half as much money on healthcare as opposed to stress workers or or less healthy individuals. So, organization would be spending less money on things such as healthcare for their employees or general general healthcare programs, which would save the money, save lots of money within the organization. So then I'm gonna talk a little bit about a 1984 study that occurred in Germany. Um, the study had to do with accidents that occurred in the workplace. So 70% of employees that worked in Germany at the time 
uh, started work at either 6, 7, or 8 a.m. and worked nine plus hours during the day. And it was found that past the ninth hour of work for these employees, the number of accidents relatively increased substantially. So um, reducing the number of hours worked will actually decrease the accidents which happens in the workplace. And then again, it will reduce the cost within the organization. The organization doesn't have to pay so much money for things such as insurance or workers' compensation or other medical expenses. And then lastly, another um, study conducted had to do with stress in the workplace. It involved um, 95 insurance workers from the Vegas Insurance Corporation in the Nordic region, which, which encompasses countries like Norway, Sweden, Denmark. And the company had to do with analyzing these workers and how long they look at computer monitors over the course of the day. And it was found that these workers experience things such as high mental strain, high stress, delayed response times, increased <clears throat> blood pressure, higher adrenaline excretion, and physiological arousal after working long hours with these ECUs or visual display units. And also 91% of these employees that were tested had um, they experienced eye fatigue, um, shoulder and arm pain, and headaches, which actually led the company to limit the use of the, the computer monitors to 2.5 hours a day for its for its employees. So organiz organizational behavior tells us that stress causes things such as psychological behavior and physical and physical psychological, physiological, and behavioral strains which can actually be illustrated through this study. And the shorter work days, just shorter work days, specifically less time using computer monitors and staring at spreadsheets and things like that will actually lead to less stress in the workplace and in turn lead to higher levels of job satisfaction, organizational commitment and task performance, which is great and you want all of your employees working um, with you to have these things and it would just in turn benefit the organization as a whole. Hello and welcome. And now I'm going to talk a little bit and speak about the efficiency of a shorter work day that an organization will see the benefits of. I know the first thing you have to consider in the corporate America is wasting of resources. That is your average employee practicing that neglectful behavior and counterproductive behavior. And a survey that was run tracked that 30% of your average employees are going to waste anywhere from 30 minutes to one hour of the average workday, right? And so that means you already have a shorter workday essentially with the, the waste of resources, okay? And this also doesn't even include the outliers, which are going to be the employees that waste more than one hour in a workday. So there are some employees, several actually, roughly 20%, I believe, that waste in excess of one hour of the workday. So this is way too costly to an organization and terribly inefficient. And some of the responses that people put are ridiculous, which can only attest to how long and boring it is to sit in a cubicle for eight hours. Some responses varied from warming a woman's legs under the heating, uh, the sink heater in a bathroom, and then one person wasted their time by shaving their legs at their office cubicle. Um, so you can see, when it comes to an eight hour workday, people just don't have the attention span to go that long. And then another thing that speaks to efficiency is the amount of time that's being wasted in meetings. Uh, busy work is a big one in America. A lot of times to earn your keep, you have to work the full eight hours, no matter what the work is, even if it is busy work. And with moving down to a shorter work day, you decrease these type of uh, meaningless tasks that don't actually contribute anything to the organization or increase profits or put any sort of productivity out in the organization. And another thing that speaks to efficiency is employee turnover. So with the average eight hour workday, and eight hours is honestly good in corporate America, some people work up to 12 hours a day, which is insane. And if you decrease the work hours on a daily basis, you can increase your employee's commitment to the organization. And how do you do that? Well, it's simple. 
it's very commonplace in America to spend 12 hours, up to 12 hours in a workplace, come back, go to, go to bed, and run right back, right? No time for family, no time for hobbies, nothing. With a shorter work day, you go to work six hours, you come back, and then you get to spend the rest of the time with your family, working on your hobbies, you know, working, excelling in what you want to, in what you want to do, not just at work. And so the employee will become more thankful to organization. And what does that mean? Well, that means you, you won't lose a lot of that experience that you have built up that's so costly to remove from the organization. You have to reduce turnover as much as humanly possible, right? And with these shorter work days, you'll get a lot of that. And then finally, you have to speak to, well, why, don't, why doesn't corporate America do this? Why does everyone have 12 hour work days? And we'll kind of try to speak to you on how, what the thought process is behind that and why it's wrong, okay? And so I'm going to talk about the one eighth rule in organizational behavior, right? So only one eighth of your um, average organization will actually fully commit to these changes, right? The first half, won't do it at all, won't even look into it. Why? Because there's no, they don't think there's any profit to be had. And from all the benefits that we've stated earlier, this could not be farther from the truth. A shorter workday will A, increase your, rather decrease your liability to insurances. Unfortunately, someone died. That's, that's someone's, this is strictly from a professional view, but that is a lot of experience down the drain. And then potentially a lawsuit, thousands of dollars, all of these risks can be mitigated with a shorter workday, right? And then after that half, you have another half of the organizations that will try it, but they only institute a small change. One good example of this is an organization that will give you an hour off of Friday or give you a happy hour at the end of the work day on one day of the week. However, this small change isn't really in enough to institute a large change in the organization as a whole. This won't really increase um, your commitment from your employees, maybe by a minuscule amount, but not to the same degree that you would have if you shortened the, shortened the work week to six hours a day. And then the final half will only do this change for a short amount of period. And then like one of the examples that Mitch gave earlier, uh, they weren't able to continue the experiment because of costs, right? And this is true to an extent. If you shorten the workday, you might see increased costs in the short term. However, to receive all the benefits that we talked about, you need to go the long term. You're not going to see in decreases in your health liabilities in the first month that you decrease to a six-hour workday. That's just not how that works. And you're not going to see decreased turnover in a one-month time span. No, these are things that need to be instituted over several years to see the benefits of. And that is why organizations don't practice shorter work days, but they need to, right? We'll receive all the benefits that we talked about and we'll make for a better corporate America. Thank you for listening. That is our TED Talk.